is this link right here, meet.google.com. If you go there, it's going to take you to a website that looks like this. Sometimes the background image changes. It's not always these little gumballs rolling into a bowl, although that does look fun. Um, and there's a link to Google Meet. It's pretty basic. You have the time and stuff up here, but right here is how you start a meeting. When you have this, you click it, you're going to give your meeting a title. So let's say that you're meeting with your students, and let's say that you teach social studies, meeting with or Miss Pollard or whatever. Um, and you can put the date, you can make your title be whatever you want. And then when you press continue, it's going to automatically start your recording. Well, sorry, not your recording. It's going to start your Google Meet for you. Um, you can turn your microphone on or off before the session begins just by clicking on those buttons. If you want to automatically start the session by presenting your screen, meaning like I'm doing right now, you're able to see my screen and you want to automatically start with that option, you can do that by clicking here or you can click join now. Down here below join now is join and use a phone for audio. So if you have students that live way out in the county and they do not have good internet service or they don't have good cell phone service, I've been there. <laughs> like I've lived there for a few years and I understand those challenges. But if you click that, it's going to give you the option to have to share um, a number your students can call and then they'll enter that pin. So even though they can't see what's going on, they'd still be able to hear what's going on. This would be a good option for if you're doing a lecture and you have some kids who are on hybrid schedule and um, they need to call in, you've got that option. I'm going to go ahead and click join now. It automatically will share with me that dial in and pin one more time. I can copy that joining information. I can post it directly in Google Classroom if I want to or wherever my students get links. I could even go in down here at the bottom where it says add people and start typing in names of the students in my class. I could just keep going and add all of them in or I could just share the link with them and they click on it, um, whichever one you want. Okay, I don't see any questions. How are we doing? So we talked about how to get started by going to meet.google.com, titling your Google Meet session, and how to get this session started. Okay, um, down here in the bottom left-hand corner, if you ever need any of those material, or sorry, any of that um, information again to share with your students, Let's say that you get an email on your phone and you're like, um, Jimmy says that he cannot get into the class. You can copy that and send it to him by email right quick. If you have attachments inside of Google Calendar, they'll show up here. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a few minutes. So if you make um, an, a, a Google Meet inside of Google Calendar, you can automatically attach things there so you won't have to remember to always put them in a little chat box like I'm having to do <laughs> in all of my sessions. So that's always awesome. Okay, so while you're waiting for students to join, you can start playing around. Make sure that um, you just click. You, the best way to learn is to really click on all of the buttons. So we went over what all three of these meant. Toggle your mic on and off. Don't forget you can also use Control D. Um, you can hang up the call or you can use that turn camera on and off. Over here to the side, you've got your closed captions. If you want to present your screen, you click here. And it's going to give you the opportunity to um, pick one of these three. So you can present your entire screen. 
Um, and what that means is if you have multiple tabs and you want to go back and forth in between those tabs, then you can present that way. If you want to present just the window, you're going to pick which window it is that you want. And that's talking about only that tab. So if I look down here at the bottom or if I go to my next tab, well, on that recording, it won't happen. Um, so it's just going to be what's on your screen. It won't include your tabs like you see on mine that I'm presenting on. Okay. And the main bottom one is the newest addition to G Suite inside of Google Meet. It's a Chrome tab. So that one is awesome for video. Sometimes whenever you play a video or you have audio of any kind coming across your speakers inside of Google Meet, if you do not pick a Chrome tab, that sound sounds muffled or broken. But when you select a Chrome tab, it's going to be crystal clear. So if you pick that one, I'm going to pick, select the Chrome tab that you want, click share. And notice now on this tab right here, I've got that little blue window. And on my other Google Meet, if I was on my presentation, no matter where I click on on my teacher account, that tab that I selected to share is going to be the one that you're recording. Thank you, Mr. Hill. <laughs> um, does anybody have questions about those three different types of sharing devices? Sabrina, I'm going to get to your question in just a second. If you forget that you have a Chrome tab selected for your presentation and you open a new tab, you're going to get this little pop up up here. And you can click share this tab instead. And that way, um, it's going to jump to the new tab that you click on. So if you start off in YouTube and then you go to Google Classroom or something, you can just click that little um, button and it will switch your tab for you. So, stop presenting on this one. Um, Sabrina had a question that said, is it better, safer to use Google Meet? Google Meet is safer than Zoom. Um, so in a few minutes, I'm going to show you how to set up a Google Meet inside of your Google Classroom. And that's going to give you more security because students have to be enrolled inside of that Google Classroom in order to get in. Also inside of Meet, you've noticed that in the session that we're currently in, there have been some people logged in with their um, Gmail accounts or their outside personal emails or whatever, and it pops up on the screen, do you allow this person to come in? And you can click allow or no. <laughs> um, so with Zoom, you can do those, but um, you have to go into the settings and you have to actually manipulate that to make it happen, if that makes sense. You're very welcome. All right. So moving right along, we talked about that chat button. If you click on these three dots in the corner, you're going to see all sorts of different options. You have change layout, which if you see right now that like all of the screens are in like a little waffle or in a grid view, then you can click those three dots and click Spotlight, and my screen will be what's the biggest. So you'll be able to see whoever's talking. Um, that's whose screen you'll be able to see in your area here. And you can always click on the people up here to see a list of individuals within that Google Meet. Also on this menu, you have the record meeting button. So that's really handy if you have some students who cannot be in the class at that time 
and you want to make sure that they still have the opportunity to go and watch this video session, you can do that. Keep in mind that with Zoom, you cannot do that on a Chromebook. You can do it on a laptop. With Google Meet, you can do it regardless of what device you're on. If you're on a phone, a Chromebook, a laptop, whatever, you're going to have the opportunity to record this session. You can also make it be full screen to where you don't see my tabs up there at the top if you want. Um, you can switch camera. My computer has a front camera and a back camera. You have your captions there again. And then um, down here on the settings, if your microphone is not working, then you can click your settings wheel and go in and see if maybe you need to go in and turn on your microphone. Same for your video. And that is pretty much it for the basic Google Meet. Like, I'm going to share with you some things with Google Calendar and Google Classroom, but after we do that, Google Meet is going to work exactly the same on all of those other platforms. Do you all have any questions so far? Are we pretty good still? I hate to keep talking and then um, I always forget to look at my chat sometimes. <laughs> so if you all have questions, please put them in that chat box and we'll get them. Oh, John, thank you. That is an excellent question. So John asked if our um, recorded meetings are stored directly into our drives. Yes, they automatically go to your drive. I'm going to open my drive up. It will save them automatically to a folder for you. I just got to find my folder. <laughs> I've got a lot of folders. Um, and so it will share all of your videos directly into a folder. I wanted to make sure my my I didn't have anything bad on here. <laughs> Not bad, but confidential. So it is shared directly into a folder, and you'll see that folder in there. You can actually go ahead and go to that folder after you start making your recordings and click the share button and change it to anyone on the internet can view. That way you don't have to individually go in and change the privacy settings for every video that you create with your kids. If you know that every meet recording is going to be um, sent to Google Classroom, that's going to make it easier for you to not have to remember to go in and individually change the settings of every, every video. So I'm going to answer that question in just a little bit. I've got an answer for you, but I'm, I'm saving that. <laughs> That's a really good question. And I've got some good news about it. Okay. So um, in Google Calendars, actually, I'm going to go to Google Classroom. Google Classroom has started something about the end of April, beginning of May, that was absolutely awesome. So you can go into the class that you want to have a Google Meet with, and you can click your settings wheel in that class. And you can scroll down. You have to automate, like you have to give it permission to do this. So the first time it's going to say, "Hey, Google Meet's new. Do you want to add that to your classroom?" Just say yes, <laughs> um, and you can see that link directly in there. The great thing about having a Google Meet inside of Google Classroom, like I said before, is the ability to only have the students that are enrolled in that class to be able to get in. So you can copy that link and you can make it into an assignment or an announcement if you want to. Or you can come down to where it says visible to students and you can turn that little slider on just by clicking on it. And if you do that, it's going to post that meet link directly underneath the title of your class. So you can do that. 
or you can post the meet link into your stream. I always get a little bit like <laughs> confused whenever I say meet link because it sounds like I'm working in a butcher shop or something. <laughs> so if I ever giggle, that's why, because I'm thinking about hot dogs. <laughs> um, another great feature about this meet link that is generated inside of Google Classroom, if you are, you being the teacher, are the last person to leave that class, then you have the ability to, like, when you leave, it's going to lock that code and nobody can get back in until a teacher gets into the link first. So a teacher will have to be present and then once the students leave, then the teacher can leave. If you leave before the students, then it's going to be, the, the room will be locked after the last person leaves. So keep that in mind. That's a really nice feature. And if you, change it over here. If you um, are wondering like, well, what if I have a kid that will not leave? If you click on your people, then you can find the people that won't leave and um, already I'm going to pick on you because you're the first on the list. You can click that little down arrow and you can kick them out. You can just remove them from the meeting. That's also how you can mute people if you have somebody that don't know how to mute their microphone or you can pin them. Yes, so kick them out. You got places to go. I got pizza to eat. <laughs> That's usually what I'm doing whenever I'm like, okay, I got to go. I really just need to go get some food. <laughs> so um, you can go through and you can evict them, as Sue said, and get rid of them. <laughs> and um, you that way you can be the last person in that classroom so you can lock it down. I do recommend waiting about a minute while people um, have left. Only because that way the servers up in the Google Cloud have had um, enough time to process like, oh, hey, everybody has left and now it's time to lock it. So I love that. I agree. It is such a beautiful feature. <laughs> Tom, I'm so glad somebody else has humor about that because I giggle every time I say it. <laughs> so Tom says, so the one meet link works multiple times. You just have to tell students when to show. Tom, yes. And if you ever find out that a student has given out this link and it just makes you nervous, you can go up here to your settings wheel and scroll down to where it says meet. And you can reset that link to a different link. So if you ever have any doubts, you've got that ability. But that link will work over and over and over. So you're absolutely right. You don't want to know what middle schoolers talk about or high school. I mean, any kids really talk about um, when the teachers are not there. They could be back. Carrie, um, so Carrie's question says, are Recorded meetings such as this one or class sessions considered public records like for newspapers and etc. That's a really good question that I don't have an answer to, but I can ask Jimmy. I would say that if, like, God forbid there ever be something that they need to look into, then since it's stored on your Google account, maybe, but I don't know that for a fact. That's a really good question. I'm going to write it down and get an answer because I want to know now too. And I'll share it with you when I do have a correct answer. Okay. Making sure that I didn't skip over any questions here. Awesome. 
if you have any questions, everybody's using that chat button. You all are doing awesome with that. Um, if you don't know how to use the chat button and you need to talk, press Control-D on your keyboard and we'll get your question answered. You all are doing fabulous. Um, so moving right along, we talked about Google Classroom. Now I want to show you the Google Calendar. No, remember how whenever we talked about that Google Meet session and um, how if we did it from the calendar, when we click Meeting Details, it's going to have attachments already preloaded here. I want to show you how to do that because that can be a pretty handy feature, especially if you have a lot of documents that you plan on using. Um, it's going to give not only the attendees the links to see, but it's going to be nice for you to be able to have those links just to click on instead of having to go to wherever it is and grab those links. So to do that, you want to go to your calendar. If you've never been to Google Calendar before, it's calendar dot google dot com um i'm gonna open it up on my other window just to make sure that i don't have anything confidential on there okay i don't all right go in my calendar looks a little crazy but i promise there's nothing confidential in there <laughs> um and to create an event you can just click on this little plus sign up here in the corner. Um, give your session a title. And then right here where it says add Google Meet video conferencing, just click that. It's going to automatically give you a link that you can share. Right there it is. And then to add your attachments, you just go down to where it says more options and click right there. And you can add your attachments in this little description box. So when you click on that, it gives you the ability to select something from your Google Drive, either your recent folder, or you can go to My Drive or Share Drive, Shared With Me, or you can upload things directly from your computer. So like if you have a voice recording or if you have a video saved to your computer or whatever it is, you can upload it directly into there. Then if you want to, you could go down and add guests um, individually, or you can just give them a shareable link, whatever is easiest for you. Or if you just want to add those attachments just for yourself or just available during the meeting, then you don't have to add anybody. You just press save. And it will automatically save that for you. So um, when the meeting starts, you could just go to your calendar. You could join that meet. And anything that you've attached will be on those attachments. Tiffany had a question. It says, when you add it to your calendar like that, is it still the same link as when you set it up through me, or will it be, will it make a different link? So, Tiffany, if you want, I'm going to go into edit. I'm going to click X here. If you want to have the link be one from your Google Classroom, then you could always paste that link right there, but I don't think it'll bring those attachments. So that's something that Google probably hasn't thought of yet that you and I are ahead of the game on. <laughs> they need to have that to where you can change that link. I don't think. Oh, actually, I lied. They've already thought about it. So scratch what I just said. You can go into the calendar, click Add Video Conferencing, and then this little drop-down menu here, and then click the pencil. You just add those last, uh, what is that, 10? However many codes. Hang on. There we go. I just used the one for this one since I closed that one out. But you can put in the link to any um, Google Meet ID 
and I got those letters that I just pasted in off the hangout that we are all in. Just those. I'm going to close out some of my tabs. For those of you who were with me earlier, you know I had a fiasco this morning with my computer. It was kind of um, overloaded and overworked. You're very welcome, Tiffany. All right. Do you have any other questions so far? Are we still doing good? Stacy, it is. And I accidentally on the Google, um, or sorry, the Summer PD Matrix, I put google hangouts for the beginner and google hangouts was what it used to be called and in my brain i'm really trying hard to rewire <laughs> what i'm saying because google meet and google Hangouts is exactly the same thing like they changed very little but they changed the name so um, we talked about all of these features. I want to talk about number seven because there are some amazing features coming out for Google Meet that I am so, so excited for. The first one's going to be a digital whiteboard. So you're going to have the ability to have, it's called a Jamboard, and if you've never seen Jamboard before, it's really exactly what it sounds like. Let's click pause. Let's hear. So it's a digital whiteboard that you can draw on. You can even take a picture if you want to add a picture. Um, and you can draw and annotate on top of that. So they're going to pull that directly into the Google Meet template or the Google Meet interface. So if I, if I had to guess, I bet that you're going to have a button added to those three dots where it says Jamboard or Digital Whiteboard or whatever. And I'm so excited for it. You're also going to have breakout rooms. So Sue asked a while ago, she asked a question about if you could have students do things in groups. And this is going to give you the ability to do that. So you're going to have breakout rooms. You're going to be able to split large meetings into smaller room discussions. You'll be able to set a time window for those. And then when that time window counts down, it's going to automatically kick them back into that um, main session room. I'm really excited for that one. Um, moder or meeting moderation controls. You're going to be able to mute everybody with one click and you can also you'll also have the ability to unmute people if you want to and you can invite people to share their screen if you want to do that so that's pretty pretty fun and then have, have many of you used zoom before if you have you know that you can use a background picture so it's just something kind of fun. So like, for instance, if I turn my camera on instead of seeing my office background, you would be able to see a background of the beach or some people put Rupp Arena or something like that. So that would be really cool. And then you can also like upload a PDF or go to a screen and you can blur out a part of that screen. So if you have a picture and you want to blur out a student name because it's a student work example, you're going to have the ability to do that. So I'm not really sure. I won't, I don't think so because like in Zoom, you don't have, you don't have a limit on those, but they haven't said anything about limiting the size of groups in those breakout rooms. Um, one of the best features inside of Zoom is that students can raise their hand if they have a question or like if I wanted to say how many of you have used Zoom instead of you all having to go to the chat box to say yes, you could just raise your hand. I think that's really cool. And then my favorite, my most favorite out of all of these is the opportunity 
to poll and ask questions that will pop up automatically on the screen. In my head, I'm picturing something kind of like Google Classroom, where you can ask a question and then after students submit, it's going to automatically show a bar graph or a pie chart of how students responded. That's in my head, and that's what I hope shows up. So if it don't happen, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> um, but I'm so, so, so pumped for that. So one other thing to note before we start talking about questions and how we can use this with individual classes and all of that is that Google so far has given everybody access to these advanced Google Meet video conference features and throughout September 30th of this year. If I think if COVID continues to be a factor, they're going to extend those dates. If not, I know that Jimmy and I will probably be going to the board to see what we can do to get some funding um, to be able to supply this for the district because it's something that I think would be useful if we have to do NTI or hybrid, like these are, these features are just, I don't know how you could do NTI without them, in my opinion. Um, but live streaming and recording, live streaming you don't really have to worry about. That's not what we're doing here. That's when you connect it to YouTube. But the recording feature is worth it alone to me, in my heart. Um, yes. So. Do you all have any questions for me about any of the new features rolling out or anything that we've talked about today? Okay. I have one more piece of information and then I'm going to share out the, um, sign-in form and then the feedback form. <laughs> so one other thing, I have two screens at my office. So I have my laptop screen and I have an extended screen so I can like scoot things over kind of like you all do with your projectors in your classroom. At home, I don't necessarily have that. So in order to see the chat box, and be able to share my screen as well. I join in the Google Meet session with my phone so I can read the chat and be able to see everybody's screen. If you do that, just make sure that your microphone's muted on one of them. <laughs> you don't want to get that feedback from whatever the uh, opposite device is. So that's a good little hack to have in your tool belt for if you need to be able to see that chat button. We don't know. They have not told us when these updates are going to be released. They just said that they're working on rolling them out. So I hope that is before August. Fingers crossed. If you have the Google Meet agenda still open, I do have the links down there at the bottom. And I'm going to still be here until 2. So I want to make sure that I can answer your questions. So if you want to hop off and play with Google Meet and come back and ask questions, you're more than welcome to. But before you do, make sure that you complete this sign-in form. That's how I get your old PD credit. So I just copy and paste your all's names over. For those of you that were in my first session, I've already got your names over to CJ. And I'm going to email all of you the video. So we'll make sure that we got everybody in. Sign in okay. And then this is the feedback form. This one's completely anonymous. I do not have it set up to um, collect email addresses or anything. I use this strictly for my own growth. Tom, you can. Like, if I'm 
hang on, I'm going to join as on my phone right now. You can have like your Chromebook on one side, your phone on another side, a personal device somewhere else if you want to, or an iPad. And you can join the same session with multiple devices with the same account. In a minute, you're going to see three Stellas because I've got my screen presenting. presenting, presenting, presenting. See? Okay. <laughs> Hang on. I didn't mute my microphone. <laughs> Make sure that you mute your microphone. And then, well, let's see. You can do it. I think you might have to mute. Let me try. Well, usually I can. Okay. Scratch that. <laughs> but, um, oh, I know what it is. I have to turn my sound off on my phone. So I just need to turn my phone's volume down. Tight. You absolutely can. Um, let me share with you the link for that. I called them on demand sessions and I've got to send this link out to Jim so he can add it to our PD site. And I'm working on making the pictures be pretty and adding everything in there and changing the titles. But like, um, here's the one from this morning and these I just need to go in and add titles to. So these will be the on-demand sessions. I put them in a Google form because there's like three questions that will go around, that will go with them. Yeah, Becky, click, click Google Hangout. My bad. I can change that for future references, but I don't want to mess anybody up. So instead of Google Hangout or Google Meet, click Google Hangout. Um, out. He said that. Jamie, sorry about that. Was it the sign in form that's not showing up? Yes. Sorry about that. Tay, um, Whenever you complete that Google form on the on-demand, I have it set up to where I get an email every time a new submission is completed on all of these. So you don't have to worry about filling out an additional form. You'll just finish, like fill this one out. And then, oh. and then, <laughs> Watch the video, and there's three questions, and I get a copy of that email. A copy of what? Oh, you're welcome, Tate. Kathy, what do you have to make a copy of? And Tiffany, see. See if um, this link, the one that I accidentally put sing in and put sign in, works. Thank you so much, Stacy. Oh, I got you. Yeah. I do have that sign in form and feedback form on the document down there in the bottom, too, if you all, if it's easier to click on on that. Um, I forgot to say that I did make cheat sheets for Google Meet. I have three different cheat sheets, a getting started, a how to host the meeting, and then a cheat sheet specifically for students as well. So you've got three different one pagers or I call them cheat sheets. Jimmy tells me not to call them that, but I can't help it. It's ingrained into my brain. <laughs> no.
Meat cheat sheets. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. <laughs> All right, guys. Once you have that sign-in form filled out, if you don't have any questions for me, I'm going to give you the last 15 minutes to explore Google Meet and just to play around with it. You can click on the buttons on the uh, Meet that we're currently in, or you can start your new one. Um, but if you need to hop off in order to do that, you're more than welcome to. I'll also make sure that you all get a copy or get a link to this video. Shelly, thank you. I feel like you need a trophy for listening to my voice for so long today. <laughs> thank you for being here. <laughs>